There we go. All right. Okay. Well, good morning, CCC maker friends. Um, I'm Amy Schultz, and with the NACI National Association of Community College Entrepreneurship, and we're happy to have Deborah Bird, who is recovering um, from a cold and has limited uh, vocal abilities today, um, but she's here to lend some support. And then, of course, Will Watson from Kumu, um, which I think is why most of you are here, is to get the latest on our Kumu maps. Um, Will has been busy really um, customizing for this particular project. So we ap appreciate everyone's patience um, with the Kumu part. Um, this has definitely been a co-creation project, and we have, I think we'll have a, a very special um, mapping system when this is all done um, to work for all of us. So, Deborah, I know that um, you are limited in your, your voice today, but I was wondering if you wanted to um, welcome anyone? <laughs> well, I'd just like to say welcome to everyone, and please excuse my, my croakiness. Um, please, if, if you need to ask any questions, it's probably going to be easier if we do it through um, uh, keyboard Q&A uh, and follow up later. But thanks everyone for coming. Um, I think you'll be really happy with the work that, that Will has done and, and how we're moving forward with this. So, welcome. Okay. Well, thank you, Deborah. So, we'll let Will have the screen. Um, I'll be monitoring for the, the questions in Q&A. So, if, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to write those in. And, um, and then I'll, I'll interrupt Will occasionally uh, if we have questions as we go, or we can answer questions at the end. Um, Amy, so if you could definitely uh, stop me if questions are popping up, I probably won't be watching the Q&A. Um, but okay, so everyone, um, I heard your your issues with the JSON uh, import template, and um, Kumu is um, working on building a new feature to make projects exactly like this easier. And so today, I'm going to show you we created one, kind of went through a sprint after the holiday weekend yesterday to try to build something. So please be patient if um, if there's a couple kinks that we have to work out over the next day or two, but this will be a launch page that will enable you to just click. Uh, once you sign into Kumu, you can just click the link that I'm about to show you and then drop right into a project. Um, so it won't require you to import uh, the JSON template and should make things a lot easier. For those of you that for whatever reason uh, still want to go the route uh, outlined in the instructions, um, I'm happy to follow up this afternoon, um, Eastern time, or later this week to make sure that you get set up. Um, well, I know that there have also been some questions about uh, projects that aren't appearing in the organization or teams having trouble. Um, I, from what I can tell, um, for the ones that I've seen, um, what happened is that people created the projects on their personal account instead of within the organization. You'll note that there's some instructions about that in the in the document if you need to go back and review that. And so those, um, I can feel free to email me or we can set up a call later today or at the end of this webinar um, to go into more depth on that um, about how to, we'll, we'll have to transfer those projects over. Um, okay, so this, this is a landing page that we'll be sending out later this afternoon um, that welcomes you all and it, um, gives you a couple tips down here um, at the bottom to have some helpful links. Uh, these are some other example maps of other ecosystem mapping projects that we've got set up. My email address is at the bottom of the page. This is a link to the docs at Kumu. Um, and then we just have provided a couple, you know, tips for you to get started. Um, all you will need to do for those of you who are a member of the organization um, and have already signed up to Kumu, when you go to this page, if you're logged into Kumu, it will welcome you. So see here, it's welcoming my username. And I'm going to say, test um, will demo community college as my college name. Um, and so then I'm going to just hit this create CCC maker ecosystem map. And Kumu is creating the project in the background. It might take a minute or two. And then it's going to drop me straight into a project that will already be added to the organization that has the template ready to go. Um, so um, then I'm going to show you, once you get here, um, 
once you get here, I've already added some of the uh, example element categories. Um, for those of you to, you know, you can see an example. Um, and I also went ahead and created a, a blank map with some instructions that you can go in and create your own workspace. You can either work from the template or starting fresh in a new map either way. Um, so Amy had asked me to just demonstrate a little bit of how I see this operating. Um, so you'll see here that with some of these various individuals, um, you know, I've just currently labeled it an individual, but for example, you could label it Amy, and then you could label, you know, this individual, um, Deborah. So that's just an example. Um, so then you'll see here that we have already added to this template categories, data types, education pathways, events, etc. Some of these in the template, just for ease of setting it up, have all of them added in. Um, but you'll see others just have a single category and a single maker research, that kind of thing. Um, so the idea here is that we've just tried to set you up to be able to all use the same data structure to, over time, support um, the analysis that I think Deborah and others want to do on the project at large. Um, in, in a subsequent webinar, we'll go into more depth about how, in particular, uh, we can, um, you know, add fields or do different things to, you know, describe organizations or individuals that we may not have thought of that, that may be more pertinent for your local context. Um, and that's something that, that you can do on your end. You know, so for example, there's an option at the bottom of the sidebar to add a new field. So if you don't, if outcome, you know, this work-based learning category that we've already added here, you know, if you need to add something else that um, kind of matches your ecosystem and want to keep track of, let's say, an address, um, something like that, you can come down here and say, I'm going to call this address, and I'm going to say my, just to make it simple, I'm in Vermont. Um, so now, you know, we've now added another field that's going to appear up here at the top um, to that organization. Um, so uh, the idea here, too, is right now we have it set up that we can cluster by various categories. Um, so you'll see, you know, once I hit the cluster button, I can now see which individuals and organizations are associated with nonprofits, are associated with, you know, local community groups, are associated with education, um, that kind of thing. So that's this cluster by category button at the bottom. Um, Okay, so uh, I hope that seems pretty simple going straight off of the that launch page um, and that will prevent you from having to do the JSON import and all of those other things. Um, so, um, Amy, where are we in terms of questions right now based on that initial? Um, well, we have, we have Zach Dow who is a graduate from the Will Demo Community College. Um, and he just had an observation. Um, it looks like hackathons was spelled hackathons, E-R, and so he was asking if that could please be changed to hackathons um, before we deploy this. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, and now, yeah. now will, will people still be able to access the table feature if they you know, would like yep. to go in through the table to, um, and put the data? Yeah, I'll demo that in a second. Zach, can you chat in? Um, Carol, yes, yours do. I'm looking at the chat now. Um, so uh, I will I will show you in a second how to transfer. I just need a list of all of the users that have accidentally created their projects on their personal account. Um, and and so, you know, that, that may be something that we need to do. Um, so Zach, can you, where, what, um, where was the hackathons? If you can, Drop in chat if you remember what field that was. That would be helpful. Um, okay. And I think let me just go ahead and fix that while we're on the phone. Thank you. Do you remember, Deborah, where the hackathons were probably under um, events of some sort? Okay. Well, so we'll remember that, and we can we can address that later. Um, Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So Zach, um, Zach's question: What What's the path for those of us who have done 
a bunch of work. Can we overlay this structure and then reassign things to those categories it flashed on the screen right when you were first starting out? I think you meant the hackathon. So I think um, that was uh, Carol's question as well. So if they have yep. started maps. Yeah, yeah. So um, if they if they had used the um, for whoever used the JSON import template at the start, um, this will um, this will this will enable you. I mean, this is the same structure. So it, I mean, it should have the same categories from the initial JSON import template that I had sent out. Zach, if you uh, don't have that, or there's some issue where something didn't get imported properly. Um, I'm happy to work with you, um, and, and feel free to send me an email today at will at Kumu, or again, like on that launch page, um, let me find uh, that launch page that I showed you earlier today. Um, I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and, and work with you to create, you know, to get everything set up there. Um, so, and then, um, Tom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit your questions. Um, I'm going to hit your questions real quick, Tom. So, um, if you haven't if you haven't added much to it, I think that this um, this template is going to um, make things way easier for you and prevent some of the potential glitches that that you know before we had this launch page. We the Kumu team kind of saw um, we've had we've had all, you and a couple other projects all at the same time trying to do something similar to this, and so we just realized that having these launch pages would really help things get started. So um, I would recommend if you haven't really gotten started yet to just use this. If you've added in a lot of data and feel like you'd waste a lot of time, again, just like Zach, talk to me and I can help you either transfer it over. But if you would use the JSON import file from the initial documentation, um, you should have you should have this um, this structure already added in. Um, and so, real quick, I'm going to um, show you all the table as a different way to add elements um, to the template. Um, so, Tom, that um, Tom, that that question about the spreadsheet. I think what what you might remember is um, a table that's within the Kumu tool itself. Um, if you want a spreadsheet. Um, you know, to go ahead and enter in the data. I'll just demonstrate how to do that right right now um, so when all of you and, and this may be something that you'll have to remember um, um, but so here um, in this bottom right hand corner once um, for Tom and Zach if you you know this is an option where you can export um, the Excel file of the project and that export would then let you you know you could re-import that export um, within this template structure have the same sort of field data, or you could, um, that could also be a way for you to just add data. There is on docs.kumu.io, um, which all of you have the link for somewhere, um, and you can also access it down here in this help section, um, read the docs. At docs.kumu.io, we've, we've done a very detailed guide about um, imports, and so that will describe to you how to set up an import file and how to import it back into Kumu, uh, within the docs, there's also a lot of documentation about how to avoid duplicate elements, which is something that you should remember to check out. Um, and again, I know in these short webinars, it's hard to, to keep it simple a little bit. So if I confuse anyone, please just feel free to reach out um, directly and I can get you sorted. Um, Ron, um, in response to your question in chat, um, if you haven't added anything yet in the initial JSON file, I would just take the link from um, I would just take the link that Amy and I will send out later this afternoon to this launch page that I demonstrated here. Um, let me go back to it. Um, I'll have to drop back a bit. Um, so this launch page, Ron, um, you'll, you'll receive this in an email. Um, and you can just enter in your community college name create your uh, you know maker ecosystem map and then that will set you up in this new template um, and I think that'll get you off to the races really quickly um, okay so um, let me show you all uh, the table um, 
All right. So uh, again, you know, here's where we drop into um, the template. Um, and I think it'll actually be easier if I go to the demonstration map I just created. Sorry, give me one second. Um, so this table is a Kumu's version of a spreadsheet within the tool itself. So it enables you to um, use and click on, you know, you can add different fields, you can add different elements, add organizations. Well, in, in Kumu, we, we say elements when we refer to any kind of an entity that you want to represent as a node in, in the ecosystem. So that could be an individual, an organization, um, et cetera. Uh, this is taking forever. Sorry, guys. Um, and for Carol and uh, Jennifer, I didn't see if you had joined, um, but for those, for you guys who I think have um, individual personal account versus organization accounts, um, I will, um, I'm happy to run through at the end of this webinar real briefly, um, a little bit of a guide for how to use the dashboard. Um, I think the screen share and whatnot is slowing my connection, so this is loading really slowly. Give it another so second. Are there any, any questions um, while we wait? So it sounds like um, just a lot of questions as far as you know, what to do with, with what was already started. So and Will, you're, thank you for your generosity to help uh, guide people through that process. Of, yeah, I mean, really, if you're... For, for those people who have started and feel like they're effectively using things, this is just to help those who are having trouble. So, um, um, yeah, uh, I just, um, this, this is just to help those that were having trouble getting started or figuring out how to utilize some of the system. Um, for those of you that, that feel like you're good to go and, and are, things are working well, um, great, and just keep keep at it, and let us know when you you know when you run into trouble or need help. Um, okay, so um, real fast, let me before I show you a little bit more about the dashboard and how to use um, how to how to use that dashboard. I'm going to show you the table functionality. So this um, um, you'll see. Down here, there's a, um, a label that says table, um, and you can click on that label, and here you'll see our list of elements um, and the, the element types. Any tags, I recommend using tags uh, almost as a way to take notes um, about like what's incomplete or what you need to come back to, um, that sort of thing. And we've added, um, so this over here, this button in the top right corner, allows me to see all of the potential fields that we can work with. So I've taken off the ones that we're not going to discuss right now, and I'm just going to show you, you know, category, data type, education pathway as a couple of examples. So you'll see that organization two is both local community and business and industry. If I double click on it, you can see that there's a list of the potential um, categories that we've added for this project um, as you know and, and, and you can select which ones are pertinent to that organization so for individual two that we haven't done anything we're going to say that this person is you know a business person that also has a philanthropic focus and so I've selected both of those and now you'll see them reflected here in this individual two you know and within the data type um, for now let's just call it labor market information you know, and then education pathway. Um, this person is interested in investing in student support services. You know, uh, you all kind of, I think, know these fields better than I do. But so this table functionality allows you to, you know, do some of the addition, um, kind of manage your data in a spreadsheet form for those of you who are used to that. You can also, I'm not going to add one right now, but well, I can always take it off later. Um, we're going to call this org four. Um, so I can just I just double clicked in the the bottom row that didn't have anything in there, and I'm going to add organization four. Um, and now I'm going to say that this person um, is is you know local community education um, organization, um, and then we're going to call that an organization. 
Um, so this table functionality allows you to go through and build out some of your data if you prefer to work in a spreadsheet form. Um, I'm guessing you got some questions from that. Um, yeah, we have a few questions. Um, yeah, and, so Zach, my, my impression is um, please use, um, please go ahead and keep using these tags that we've laid out. If you want to add fields for yourself um, within your ecosystem, feel free. And so um, I think I showed you, you know, we'll look at um, this org, org four um, that I just created. And again, you can add a field down here. Um, and within the docs.kumu.io, there's a lot of information about fields um, and how to use them. Um, I'll hit the other chat from Carol before I go over to the questions. Um, Carol, I think of tags as being really helpful for, you know, um, I'll just I'll just show you. Uh, you know, I'm going to call this one um, incomplete um, because I haven't finished it yet. You know, I have all this information that I haven't added yet. Um, so now there's a tag. Um, now there's a tag on organization four that, that tells me that it's incomplete. I'm also just to, for the purposes of demonstration going to show you for this, you know, this other example. Um, so now when I click on organization four, I can see the tag for incomplete. And when I hover over that tag, it shows me all of the elements that have been tagged with incomplete. So that enables me to, um, to kind of keep track in my own head any sort of like notations or little notes to myself about how to like things that I still need to do. Um, we really recommend that you use tags in that way. Maybe using tags to also describe you know the year that you um, the year that you you know added an element, but that's something that I think more what um, more what we might want to do in a separate field that, that that'll come from Deborah when we get ready to do any sort of time-based analysis. But for now, um, Deborah just put it in chat. I, I agree. Think of it. Think of the tags as operational rather than organizational. Um, um, we have an interesting um, line of questioning going on in the question box. And I think this okay. is exciting because I think this is helping us get into like the next phase of, Kumu, um, which we're not going to get there quite yet, but um, yeah, if you want to take a look um, and address those as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to hit them really quick, and then I'm going to make sure that I address uh, Carol and Jennifer's questions on the dashboard and how to make sure you know um, where it is, uh, like where things are, and how to create other projects. So, um, so Ron. Um, Ron's question was just to comment the export to an XLS will be very useful since we can develop a common template for data collection. Then, as I understand it, we can then import the data collected into Kumu. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm just going to agree with you. That's exactly the idea behind the, the export template. Um, yeah, and so um, awesome, Israel. Glad to hear. Let me know, follow up, and let me know if you have any other questions about. Um, you know, setting that up, but it's good to hear that you feel like you understand what it what it can do. Um, we are also starting really basic for those. So for those of you go getters who want to dig into the docs.kumu.io, watch some of the videos. Um, there is a massive amount of functionality that we haven't even tapped yet. There is um, community detection algorithms to detect based on connections, uh, different nodes. There's a lot of social network analysis metrics. Um, that you can then use to size nodes. So there's a whole lot that you can dig into and get excited about that we're not even touching here. We're just trying to address the basic question of how to start setting up an ecosystem map. Um, so Kimberly, um, it appears that in our map we have extra elements that we don't intend to have. How can we check the elements? Um, you can click on an element and then hit the trash delete button. Um, you can also click on an element and hit delete on your keyboard, and that will delete the element. Um, let me know if that answers your question. Feel free to follow up in chat or with another question if I didn't address that. But I'm going to check. Let me know if that didn't answer it, but I'm going to check that one off for now. Um, just click on the element that you don't want and then um, hit the delete button. Um, so, Ron, um, well, let me just see. There's a chat coming through. Okay, Deborah, you may have to verbally 
ask that, um, the connection function. So, um, Ron, um, we have set this project up based on um, what we call clustering. And so, you know, as I've mentioned multiple times, there's a stocks.cunia.io, um, and I'll just show you there's a guide on clustering in particular, so you can go back to it. Um, but, you know, here is the full tutorial guide for all of Kumu's features um, at docs.kumu.io, and there's a guide for clustering. And so this guide for clustering, you know, the idea is to show hidden relationships in the, in the data. So um, here are all these elements, all these names. Um, and then based on clustering, we draw connection or relationship lines based on underlying attributes, exactly as Ron asked. So, you know, um, where did that come through? And I, I think to add to that, Will and, and Deborah, um, please feel free to jump in. But this is um, that we were looking really at the attribute piece as kind of the second phase. So after um, the, the mini grants are awarded. So people right now are in their project plan design um, phase where they're you know cool. really looking at the ecosystem. And then once um, people start their projects, then we can really start getting deeper. And I don't know if, if you have something to add to that, Deborah, if that was kind of what you were thinking. Yeah, but it's, it's great if people can jump in and mm -hmm. play with that because when you start using clustering and, and the decoration function, then you can start to play and see different relationships. Yeah, so, um, you know, right now I have a button built into your templates to allow clustering by category. So again, if I click on, you know, CCC Maker Project 1, we've got four categories. Um, let's say this one, though, was only, you know, two categories. Um, so this, you know, this button hitting cluster by category, um, it's going to show us, um, you know, the, the, the relationship lines are drawn based on that category. Now, you know, to uh, risk going too far, um, we've got um, the ability over here um, it's not a button, but you'll see this clustering area. Um, so here within the clustering section of the settings, you'll find the option to cluster by, you know, we could cluster by data type to see what, what are all the nodes that are connected to maker research? Um, what are all the nodes connected to internships tracking? Um, you know, or we could cluster by, uh, let's see, industry sector to understand, okay, you know, what are all the nodes that are all of these industry sectors? Um, what are all the nodes that are, you know, just that industry sector, et cetera, et cetera. So um, clustering by, you know, these different, all of these different fields that we have added allows us to cluster by them and see the relationships from um, those pieces. So um, let me see. I think we've gone through all the questions. I'm going to check chat, and then I'm going to go over to awesome. Um, okay, Carol, I'm going to now go into um, the dashboard. So when you sign into Kumu, um, as a caveat, uh, I am added in a part of um, almost an infinite number of various projects. So this is not going to look like yours. It's going to look way more hairy and complicated. Um, but when I first sign into the dashboard, um, I have the opportunity to create a new project. So for those of you who may have your, you know, template on your personal account, what probably happened is you clicked on this new project button, um, and then you didn't change the account here, and so you just created it under your personal account. Jennifer, I'm I, I checked yours. I know that that's what happened to you. Carol, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure out if that's what happened to you. But you'll see you can, if you click that new project button, you can click the CCC Maker organization. I'm a part of all these other organizations. But you can create it underneath the CCC Maker organization, and then that would have put it in the right spot. Um, that's not the only way to get there, though. Um, I'm going to go back to that main dashboard page. Um, and you'll see here, you know, these are all of the projects that my username is associated with, right? It's just kind of an open 
Um, it's an open list of all the projects that I have. If I click over into organizations, the one that we're talking about is CCC Maker. So I'm going to click on that one. And now I can see, you know, once I'm on the organizations tab of my dashboard, I now can click new projects um, to create a project within the organization. So, you know, these are the projects that are currently created within the organization. Um, and I, I can continue managing it with Amy so that all of you can see each other's projects. Um, so I think, and you know, a lot of you guys have, you know, created projects for your various colleges within, within this. Um, so and you won't be able to see all of them because I've done some testing and I'm going to keep some of them kind of behind, behind the curtain, but for, we're going to make all of the college projects um, able and open to be used. Um, Carol, does that, um, let me know if that helps. If you can send us a chat or something, if that, um, if that helps. Um, Deborah, I'm not sure what you mean by is the project plan linked with Kumu or is it a different document? Um, so if you, um, let me know. But um, I think that that, you know, should help. So I can see here, let's see, if I click on, um, you know, Jennifer's username, I'll just show you, Jennifer. Um, you know, your project, I think, is going to be underneath your username. Um, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's what happened to you. Now, I can show you, I'll just run an example um, to show you one more thing. We're going to have to probably upgrade some of you to a different level in the organization so you can transfer. Um, but I'll just do, I'll just show you from a random test project under my account if I can actually get it to load with the webinar connection, um, how to transfer it. Okay, cool. Um, so we've got it in here. Um, up here, for those of you who are gonna need to transfer your project inside the organization, um, and this is something that we can follow up on later and you can find within the docs too. But up here is the project settings. So here are all the settings that all of you will see. There's an option under admin to transfer project. So um, I can then transfer the project out to CCC Maker um, from my personal account. So that's what we'll need to do for Jennifer and anyone else. Just let me know if you're one of the users that thinks that your project has been created for your personal account. Um, but you can transfer it out to the organization. We'll have to, um, Jennifer or Carol, if you can just check that real quick. I think I may have to make, um, I think that I have to that I'll have to like make it as an organization um, um, make it as an organization like you an owner of the organization so Jennifer or Carol if you can check to see if you see that option to transfer your project into CCC maker uh, just drop that in chat and if not I can change the permission setting and then when we um, later we can see we'll be able to see that so um, Amy, was there anything else you wanted me to touch base on um, this morning? I, no, I, I think we covered it. Um, and I thank you, everyone, for your participation in the questions. It was great to have that feedback and just to kind of see where people are with this. Um, I don't I don't have anything else for now. I, I think we have, um, you know, kind of a good equal starting point um we'll get the the link out this af later this afternoon so people will have access to that um, and then it's great to have a feedback you know if people are starting to um, go more advanced to the clustering please stay in touch with deborah and myself and that will help to really build out like the next phase of this um so i i think that's all i had deborah did you have anything else to add for today Uh, no, that's it for now, but thanks very much, and we'll be following up with more detail later, I think, as the map start to, to grow and evolve. So the only thing I would say is please be careful about adding new fields, um, because when we start to consolidate into a meta map, um, if we have a lot of extra fields coming in from a lot of different colleges, it's going to skew the, the data. So if you feel the need to add a field, 
please let us know and um, we can discuss it and then um, decide and inform everyone. Um, and maybe uh, tags might be useful for something until we, um, until we finalise a field. I'm not sure what Will thinks about that, but that's an option. Um, yeah, and then, um, Deborah, I, uh, my thought on that is that um, we don't have to import all of everybody's fields. Um, we can just choose to import the fields. You know, we'll have, it'll, it'll take a little bit of doing when we get to that point. Um, um, so, so I, I would just say that, you know, maybe check in um, with all of us if you find the need to do that. But, um, uh, but I would just, I, I'd feel okay adding, if people added fields, because Deborah, we're going to have to choose the ones that we bring in. So as long as people are using our fields, if they need to add their own, we can just ignore those. And that won't mess with some of the analytic capability. Um, that's, my, that's my feeling on that, if that makes sense. Yeah, as long as we don't end up with people having very closely related fields that really should have the same name. Yeah, that's true. That's, yeah. Um, uh, Jennifer, so I just changed um, a permission setting uh, so that you should be able to transfer something into the organization. Um, so if you can just refresh your screen. Okay, awesome. Um, so I'm going to change that permission. Jennifer, um, I'm, let me know if, I need to, if we need to do something else, but I'm just going to... Um, change you back um, as well. So, um, okay, um, let me know if anybody else, if you have any further questions. Um, and we can go from there. Okay. Well, Will, thank you um, from the CCC maker community just for your willingness to customize and, and make this um, you know, particular to our project. So it's great to, to see it evolve and we appreciate all the effort that you've put into this. Absolutely, this has been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, all of you, please look at those docs and kind of uh, dive into all the other options for what you can do with Kumu. Um, there's also uh, just a, okay. Um, thanks, Kimberly, I see your question. I'll do that right now. Um, there is um, a lot of stuff, a lot of exciting stuff happening for Kumu right now. One of them is a plus acumen um, systems practice and systems thinking course. So for those of you who may be interested in some systems thinking work, um, there's a, you know, I can, I can let you have a link that, you know, can drive you through a course put on by um, plus acumen and Kumu about systems practice. So for those of you who are interested, that's also something that we've, been working on a lot recently and are pretty excited about. Um, so, okay. Thank all you right. all. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, don't hesitate to reach out um, to myself or, or Deborah if uh, you have any questions. All right. And with that, we'll end the webinar. Thank you.